I'm basically doing anywhere from like 20 to 15 hours a week, um, maybe even more sometimes. Okay. And I'm not saying I recommend this for people. Um, and as I said, some of those sessions, and when I talk you through the, the, the way it's structured, um, as in like intensity wise, some of those sessions are not really that difficult. Um, but the average person is probably doing anything from three to five hours yeah. on the mat each week. So I'm four times that. So if you imagine that, if we expand that over the, over a week, it means every week that I'm doing is an average of a month of someone else who's training. Every every one month of me is four months of theirs. It doesn't sound too bad until you start getting to the years. So if you do years, year one for the average person compared to my mat time is four years for me. Mm. And then you get to the five year period, five years for me on that mat time is 20 years of mat time for the average individual. And that's mm. where you can see the gap starts to grow. And that's why I like to do the maths and do the numbers. And as I said, it's not always like full on in intensive sessions, mm. but um, I mean, you must know yourself after a while you get to not the top of the club, but you get almost comfortable in the club and you can, it's not taxing you too much but you're actually going for your game, you're repping it out. Um, but my my weeks are structured that it's sort of, um, it's, it's planned in the sort of sensible way, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting statistic because I think, as I alluded to earlier, I've been in jiu-jitsu now. I probably first dabbled in jiu-jitsu, it must have been 17 years ago, such a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, a long time. And for the first couple of years, it was it was very like half assed training and I yes. got a little bit serious. And there's been probably like like, maybe sort of two or three year periods at various points in that time frame yeah. where I've actually trained a little bit more serious. Mm -hmm. But even when I was competing in MMA, not like at a high level, but like yes. semi-pro, mm -hmm. um, I was, I can remember working out back in the day as mm -hmm. you've done. Mm -hmm. I was back then doing MMA, I was only doing 12 hours. Yeah. And that wasn't 12 hours of martial arts. It was everything. Yes. So that was skills training, S&C, everything. Mm -hmm. But outside of those acute periods where maybe I was training for a fight, you're absolutely right. I was probably training maybe three, five hours a week max. Mm -hmm. So I think you're spot on. I think that is probably what the average person trains. And that was because yeah. I worked Monday to Friday, nine to five. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in a position like yourself where you're very fortunate where yeah. your employer yes. like supports your training. Mm -hmm. And I can remember there was a period definitely ages ago when I was, I'm not obviously the, the, the sharpest tool in the box because I was like, I don't understand why people are getting so much better and I've trained longer than them. <laughs> and it took me a while, as silly as it sounds. Yeah especially when it was back in the day and it was still a bit new to, to get my head around that sort of stuff. Yeah. But actually I've been training 15 years, say three times a week, mm -hmm. four, well, three hours a week, five hours a week. And don't ask Kenny cause he'll tell you I've trained <laughs> three times in 15 years. <laughs> but the last couple of years, certainly I've barely trained at all is the truth. Yeah. Um, but then you've got someone like yourself who, you know, you've surpassed me in belt ability, everything mm -hmm. in such a short period of time, but it makes perfect sense when you explain it like that. Yeah. So it's a really interesting point that I think a lot of people probably just wouldn't think about.